she's in special company of having been nominated for an Emmy daytime and now primetime. We're talking to the warm and wise Patricia Darbo next. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Let <laughs> laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love Garth Brooks. I love Garth Brooks. And so does Patrika Darbo. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Which is how we saw him in concert. Hi, welcome to Spotlight On. I am one of your hosts, James Lott Jr. And today we're going to spotlight somebody who's wonderful. But first, my co-host, the man that I always try to get next to in some form or another. Matthew yes. Evan Payne. <laughs> Glad to be here. And my homegirl's here today. She uh, plays Margot Mullen on the series Acting Dead. The show is hilarious. And she earned a primetime Emmy nomination for Best Actress Short Form Comedy. How exciting. She's it's also known for, exciting. yes, it's very exciting. She's also known for a hugely popular role on Dance Our Lives, of course, which she was nominated for a daytime Emmy for Best Supporting Actress. She has a long and varied resume. He was starting out with Del Shores. Oh, that's some great stuff there. My girl, Patricia Darbo. Hi, Mal. Hi, how are you? I'm very fine. Glad you came back. Welcome. Well, thank you. We haven't worked together. No, no. we haven't. But it's we the first time for everything. <laughs> you don't forget your first, do you? <laughs> <laughs> He's fresh. Yes, well, she knows me already. She knows I'm fresh. <laughs> so we're going to, before we even begin, because I have to do an update of an update. So uh, the first picture, not that one, um, the next one before that. That's, that's, that's another one. That one. So I put it together. <laughs> so Patricia and I met, if you saw our interview 10 months ago together, we met in 1999, and she wow. was the nicest person. She won that year at the Soap Opera Digest Awards for Best Female Newcomer. So she did win an award, and then we, and we met up again about 10 months, 10 months ago, and we had to interview. So I put and it together. I have that picture on my piano right by my uh, statue. Oh, how so? oh, I thought it was fun. It's really nice. I so that's, oh, look at us. Oh, that's over the years. And I know. Right. I, like I said last time, I've lost weight. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and it sort of looks like my color has looked, just wavered a little bit. So. We look good together. We do. Good. So I just want to bring what that up. cute couple. Yes, we're a cute couple. <laughs> Let them start talking. Do it. Start talking. So that's crazy. But congratulations on your um, on your Emmy nomination. It's thrilling. It's and it's very exciting. It comes from my peers, which means a lot more. So it's terrific. And it's something for a new kind of category that hasn't been done before, right? It's a. It, they just started it. It's the short form, which means it's 15 minutes or less. And there's, I think, variety show in it also. There's several other short form categories that are there. So. Yeah. So it's like this is the, this is the way. This is not even the future. It's now. All the digital stuff is happening. They got to recognize it, and you know, and, and the Emmys and stuff. It, you know, it's so amazing to me. We're talking about the future and the digital and this, and we're sitting here on the radio. There's. A dichotomy <laughs> that's kind of like hello. Right, hello. we're being podcasted. That, that, we're also that, got that, you know it's, cameras and and and, yeah. uh, and uh, Anthony and I were talking earlier today about the fact that no one watches television anymore. I mean, everybody's on their phone or their laptops or their something, and it's crazy anymore. But vote for me because I'm wonderful. Vote for her, <laughs> folks. Tell us about the role of Margot. Margot is an ex-talent agent, crossed it out now, um, or she's a travel agent, now she's a talent agent, and she may have to go back to being a talent agent, but you know, <laughs> who knows? She's versatile, yes. and, um, and she's a bear, and she's yeah. fun to do. I mean, I love all my wild characters. So. We're going to show a clip right now of um, a few, few minutes of her in her elements, and this is from episode two, Throw the Switch. Yes, we'll have him bring his own shoes. Uh, and you don't have to worry about bathrooms. He won't drink anything the night before. <laughs> Margot Mullen was my agent. Nice, but crazy. Her hairs are everywhere. And after drinking one once, I always say no to a glass of water. Yeah, we're very happy, uh-huh. Bye-bye. Was that for me? Oh, God, no. It's a pilot for Fox. You're not there yet. <laughs> and I do have an audition for you. And I gotta say, this might be it because I'm getting carpal tunnel from stapling your headshots to your resumes. You know, if you had a computer, you could just. Ah, oh, here it is. It's a student film. Oh, and what do you know? They want zombies. <laughs> I told them that you'd done soap, so. <laughs> I have done soaps. What about lying? TV movies. <laughs> and even other kinds of movies when I needed money. <laughs> and even a lot of years ago on the infamous live episode that oh, ended the long-running sitcom, Too Much Family Love. Oh, Pablo. That's not funny. I'm supposed to be the funny one. Why is everyone so f***ing unprofessional? Starring Alex 
Carboneau and Hunter Lee. <laughs> He's hilarious too. So I want to shout out. So that's part. You can you can go online and see if this, if this series is really hilarious. And it stars uh, Brian B. Cock, who also then he created. Yes, and he did. He's the writer. So and Julian Claire, Eric Martzoff's in it. Our buddy Eric Martzoff. Now I saw they said also. Um, there's also episodes with uh, Carolyn Hennessy. Um, is there? Because she's Carolyn. Named he- Carolyn. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hello. 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 Another yes. redhead. Another you know, redhead. Car- yeah, what a doll I she is. I love her. And I love her. So talented. I mean, yes. I hope we get to work together on yeah, something yeah. in the future and stuff. So, she's, yeah. she's great. I've met her. She's great. Um, but it was a great series that's out. And it's about coming series about Hollywood zombies. And you have big hair well, it's, and it's red. I think and... it's, 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 yeah, I have big People hair. People love you with big hair. They do. I have big hair. <laughs> you know, honey, it's from, I'm from the South. What we can do with a rat tail comb will just knock your socks <laughs> off. I mean, it's amazing. I could make this hair look that big. It just, you know, when it's short <laughs> now. So. teasing it. That's right. I can be Little wide. Little mm, <laughs> Kind of crazy. <laughs> I love how the nameplate on, on Margot's yes. desk has the <laughs> trash <laughs> travel. Travel crossed out and talent written on. You gotta do something somewhere. But it's, you know, it's a great premise though because there's so many zombies and so yes. such supernatural stuff going yeah. on all over the place. So this was a great idea that I just think I'll kill myself then and we'll just, you know, and then you work all the time. Yeah. Who knew? It's a great commentary on sometimes certain things becoming that's your way through. You try hard to be, I'm Shakespearean, I've done this, I... We are actors, we can do anything. (laughs) And then something weird happens, you get a hit. The sense from the clip is that it's probably a lighthearted set, yeah? You know, it's a lot of fun, I think everybody's... And you know what, when you're working for nothing, and I do mean that, I mean, we put it together on a shoestring, Brian's idea and everything and everybody out, we begged, borrowed. The only thing we didn't do is steal. At least I don't think we did, and I wouldn't admit to it if we <laughs> no, had. Um, but um, yes, at any point in time, I wouldn't. But, um, you know, this is the icing on the cake for me. I felt bad that some of the other people weren't nominated yeah. from it, and the show didn't make it. But hopefully, uh, if if and when I win, I have to be positive. Um, we can get money for a second season and some more work to it and have everybody back and stuff. And you could be the conduit to which they say, oh, this is a really good series, and then next time around. Well, it'll get it out there. See, yeah. sometimes people don't get to see what's on the internet, and yeah. um, it's a fun show. It's funny. Yeah, it's funny. And, um, and it, it pokes fun at things, and it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of up to date with what's happening in everywhere, so it's kind of fun. And where do you film? Everywhere. Everywhere? Everywhere that would give us a place for free. <laughs> all in. Oh, all over, anywhere, hunt. We went anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> Whatever. If we needed this and they said you could have it, we went there. It didn't matter where it was. I mean, there were rooms changed into certain things. I mean, you you learned to be inventive. <laughs> how, did it, how did it come about, your role on, on Acting Dead? Um, I had worked with them, one of the producers, Susan Bernhardt, before, and she asked me to come do the part, and I because I'd worked on Misbehave that she had produced. Mm, yes, yes, she did that. And yes. so that was fun, and um, so I got to go do this. Wow. So if I can say anything to other actors, be nice to everyone. You shouldn't have to be told to do that, and every little job can lead to another job that leads to a bigger job. So be nice and take that job unless it's morally offensive. That can lead to a primetime Emmy nomination. Yes. Wow. But I know, but that is, that's so true. This that you be nice, just be kind to you. You never know who may come back around and give you that job. Well, you never know that, but you know, no one should have to be told that. I mean, right, you should just normally be nice to people. Right. Um, but yes, every little thing you do, sort of, it's it all comes back some way. And I've been very blessed that it's come back. Yeah. Very rewarding for me. I always quote. Um, Karen McKenzie from Knott's Landing. She has a very famous speech called Pollyanna. It's on YouTube. You can look it up from 100 years ago. And she tells Gary Ewing that she's upset because, as she says, people should be nice. Nice should be the norm. That's part of her speech. And I love that. I, I, that stuck with me since I was like 10 years old. And it should be. Absolutely. Should be. Absolutely. And you're very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The noises you made. I know. I love it. The squeals. I love it. Um, I'm available for voiceover. Okay. Hello. <laughs> the girl wants to work. Give her a job. She's ready. Um, now I'm going to show another clip. Uh-oh. Yes. Because this is when you were nominated for a daytime Emmy. Because I really want to talk about this because you were a person who didn't, quote unquote, look like a soap actress. Uh-huh. And you were also a, in a supporting act. You got a Emmy for a supporting actress. I mean, you like you weren't like the comedy sidekick. You had a serious storyline. Yes, I and that's why I want to kind of just show a piece of this. This is from the Emmys 2000. Here are the nominees for Outstanding <laughs> Supporting Actress in a Daytime Drama. Carly on General Hospital, Sarah Brown. 
I love you. And I know it doesn't mean the same thing to you as it does to me, but I know that I know that you love me too. Sharon on the Young and the Restless, Sharon Cates. It is like a miracle being reunited with my daughter again after all these years. But then I think of this Alice and the fact that she can come back and take my daughter away from me anytime, and that scares me. Nancy, on the days of our lives, Patrika Bobo. You're coming to live with me. We're going to work this all out. But you have to tell your husband. I'll take care of everything with Craig. Don't you worry. Okay. <laughs> Alexis on General Hospital. So I just had to show like there was this kind of everybody screened for you and how, but it's like it was a serious. I mean, you were. I mean, you stood up. up you were with them. You were an equal, and you'd have to to go to like the lengths of like they make you want to go to in in daytime. It was fun. I you know watching it and stuff like that. I just how, how blessed I am because it, again this comes from your peers, so that was very rewarding. Um, and I have to say, those ladies are unbelievably talented. Oh, Sir, and, Sir Joy Brown actually and, won that year, but yes, she did. Yes, she I mean. did. And, um, and, uh, but I, I was in great company. You were equal. Great. You were an equal. But I, but I was in great company. So. Yeah. Do you remember when you found out about the daytime Emmy nomination? Oh, yeah. I announced. I was at the, I was in New York. I didn't announce myself. I had another category. And I'm sitting there, not anybody think about it. And they go, and Best Supporting Actress. And they say my name. And it was like, and I've just burst into tears. Aww. I truly burst into tears. Yeah. And Joy from On The View, yeah, um, she came out, honey, are you okay? And I said, it's <laughs> So it was, uh, I mean, she was going, okay. I, as, as only Joy Bay. Yeah, right. do, yeah. Um, but it's it okay, was, honey. It was, <laughs> and it was like, I, I went from there to the airport to come home because I had to work. In, oh, so funny. it was like, it was it was terrific. But it was, I, I just burst into tears. and. Because again, I mean, that meant that the people that I work with on a regular basis mm -hmm. thought I was doing a good job. So. Mm -hmm. And what was it like when you found out about the primetime nomination? You're a good question. I'm in the car driving across Minneapolis, no, Minnesota. We, we just left Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. I'm driving in the phone in the car, which I didn't know how to work, would start <laughs> ringing and going crazy because the guy had synced my phone to this thing. And, and both Rolf and I are like this. And so I pushed the button, and the lady that was dog sitting said to me, You just got to help me. <laughs> Swerve down the road like this. <laughs> uh, what you? So, that was very exciting. Very exciting. And Joy Behar appeared to control you. So <laughs> yeah, man, like no, it was the policeman going. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just drive safely, miss. <laughs> yeah. yes. Step away from the guy. <laughs> well, everyone in the chat room was just saying congratulations to you. Thank you. They're really happy for you in here. Our regulars are in here. Um, it's a, again. It, you worked opposite Nadia Borgen, who I, I know personally too. She's a great girl. Oh, she had a baby. Incredibly beautiful. Incredibly. And beautiful. She tried to make her look ugly. It's so funny back then when she was blue girl and stuff. You, she still looked beautiful through all the crazy I, that's, matted that's hair. That's the soap world. She's a Miss Ghoul Girl who turns into this incredible yes, thing. Like, knockout. And then, then she opens her mouth and sings, and you're like, I, again. yeah, exactly. And then i um, and I must say, I got to was privy to see a picture of her baby that she just. Had. Oh, you said, oh. What a doll. I'm sure. And let's talk about he's got his mom's lips. Uh oh. Ooh. Uh -oh. Beautiful. And that, okay. and that family can sing. That whole family can sing. Oh, so that whole family is beautiful. They all, I mean, they're all beautiful, too. You have to take a rake to make any one of them look ugly. Like, like this. So it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, they are, too. <laughs> they're gorgeous. Then they open their mouths and sing or play an instrument. Yeah, they're like, it's oh, amazing. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> My friends ask me not to sing. <laughs> no, so, listen, I can do it if they ask me. <laughs> Oh my God, so as we move as we move along, we're going through your whole career. This is just your life. This is just your life. This is your life. Because he has questions, I have questions. So the next one we're going to show. Oh, actually, did you go to Dave's fiftieth? Yes. I saw you before that. Yes. What did you think? It was wonderful. I mean, it was terrific. And the show that I talk about talented people. Yeah. Most of the time, the audiences only get to see them as actors. But you'd be surprised the singers and uh, oh, right. that we have. It, it was unbelievable. I mean, just everybody. I, I don't think there was a cast member that didn't sing except me. I wasn't asked. <laughs> but but I, I'm not around that much. And yeah. um, uh, it was. And Kevin couldn't be there because I'm sure Kevin would have been. Oh, there yeah, he's so, a, yeah, he's because yeah. he's wonderful. But it was. It was. 
was a it was the best. I wow. mean, to see first of all to get to see people that you hadn't seen yeah, for a long everybody time. Everybody was there, yeah. And it was terrific. And, yeah. and the crew that I adore, so oh, that yes. was wonderful. So. Who did you bump into at the day's fiftieth that you either that you were just really excited to see or that you were like, oh my god. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Oh, well, Peggy McKay, who I don't ever get to work with, she was there, um, and she's like another icon. Suzanne Rogers, who I adore. Uh, I love Suzanne. I love Suzanne. So, uh, I love Suzanne. I, everyone has nice, the same reaction when it comes to Suzanne. She's another nicest woman oh, on completely. the face of the earth. And she, you should have her on. She's so sweet. Well, I've interviewed know? her before. Oh, she's wonderful. And she's she, flirty and funny oh, and just and like... Talented and talented sweet. Person, and too. sweet. So, We're yes. trying to get her back on. Yeah. Over at uh, Edition Days oh, or a Spotlight on. So, Suzanne. Suzanne, Suzanne do a girl. Suzanne, if I see her, I'll tell her. Yes. Next, she needs to be on because she's yeah. a, she, what a nice lady. A treasure. Yes. A treasure. Yes, yes. Who else did I see there? Um, Drake was there, and Drake hadn't been to the show when I was there, so I adored Drake. And, um, He's a super nice guy, gosh, too. And, and who we were just talking about, Matt Cedeno. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. hot stuff, mm-hmm. everybody. You know, Brandon. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, to see people that were kids. You know, Jason oh. Cook, who oh, hasn't yeah. been around. You know, it's just amazing yeah. to see the people there. And your, your life starts going, oh, okay. <laughs> was there anybody you didn't want to see? Just kidding. Was there anybody so. I didn't want to see? <laughs> you saw there. <laughs> we'll get that yeah, shady. I wouldn't tell you if I did. Exactly, get you that know, shady. There are, just, there are some people whose noses, they drown in a rainstorm. But. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's a great thing. I love that. They're all, I love that she's so positive. She's so bubbly and awesome. Uh, they, they love your giggle. <laughs> Thank you. They're saying that in the chat room. So the next thing is now you can show that that first picture you're going to show because you do get asked about this a lot. Now is they want to know what happened to your character because you were on the first season. We went into the beauty step by step, and we we're never heard from again. <laughs> yes. Patrika, what happened? Yeah, Where what happened? did you go? Where'd you go? We went into the beauty parlor, and we were never <laughs> referred to or talked to again. <laughs> and if you look at that picture, some of the children went into a room. They did too, yeah. I know some of them and did. never came out again. Yeah. And then another child was born. That's how <laughs> things happen. Now, I have to ask you, because I'm a huge Dallas fan, Patrick Duffy. I would walk through fire for him. <laughs> oh, good. He oh, is wow. such a nice, nice man. And you don't get to see the, the comedy side. I mean, people, I don't think people realize coming out of Dallas how funny he is. Yeah, that's what I heard. Um, and so he was, he was the best. And then he went to B&B. I saw him yes. there a little bit. Yeah, he was there, yeah. But he's, he's a treasure, too. And Suzanne. And Suzanne Summers. Okay, Suzanne, amazing. And Suzanne was very funny because this was, instead of being like three cameras, we were, this was filmed. So oh, okay. it was like, this is where you had to hit your mark and stuff like that. And Suzanne would be going, I just have to stand here. What do you mean I have to hit him? <laughs> she was used to the old format oh, and stuff yeah. like that. But what a, you know, just her looks alone yeah. can just, you know, oh, yeah. freeze you. And the, and just are so funny that you have to bite the inside of your lips sometime to stand. And all the talented kids that were there. Oh, yeah. Came, so. Especially, what's her name? Who she, what she, did, she did some other stuff later. Oh, my God, I'm looking at her name. Are you talking about the blonde? Stacy? Yeah, Stacy. Yes. Stacy, 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 yes. Stacy. Stacy you know, Keenan? Stacy, yes, to Keenan. Keenan. She hasn't really done a lot lately, I don't no. think, because I haven't seen her. I see uh, Angela, oh, okay. uh, the, the, the pretty one. Yes, um, yes. Uh, and, um, and Christine down there, I see her. I haven't seen the others, uh, but, like, um, uh, most of the boys I haven't really seen that much, but um, I'm, I, am I just blurred over as to the name and Peggy Ray of course has passed oh yeah yeah. Um, but the the son that played the like Brandon the, the, Brandon was the older son but the one that was Suzanne's son in the yeah, middle okay. Okay. He, he was he, he played such a nerd which was yeah. wonderful but what a little jock he was on the baseball oh. team at school and all kinds of stuff so he was something else and I, you know he's probably in college now or teaching football or something. I mean, that show went off for like nine years, eight, nine years. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. It did it go on. Like 45. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And Chris, well, Christine has been doing a lot of stuff, yeah. and she worked a lot, of, and, and still does over at Gary Marshall. And she's beautiful. Yes, yeah. and she she's a lot, very good on stage. She did a lot of stuff at Gary Marshall's Theater oh, okay. in okay, Toluca good. Lake. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't get to see them enough, but it was a nice little family that we had there. Did you know that your last scene of season one was your last scene, period? <laughs> no, I had no idea. I thought we were coming back, and that's what happens, you know. I have to say, though, and who is not pictured here, was Sasha. Um, yes, Sasha, Sasha Mitchell. You know, the minute Sasha came on the show, like a third or fourth episode, Peggy and I went, mm, we're not long yeah. for this world. You came to star. And yeah. um, it, it's kind of like Urkel, because uh, yes. uh, he wasn't who was the center of that that show. He came on for like the third or fourth season and yeah, yeah. the audiences go crazy. And I just want to say to the audiences, that's the power that you have. 
And seriously, yeah. It truly is because you can change everything that's going on. And right now it's kind of unfortunate that like Days is so far ahead in the things they do because the audiences aren't having a chance to say, could you change that to fix this? So it's it's been a little tough there, but that's the nature of the beast at this point. Yeah. Those scenes, season one, with you and Peggy and Suzanne were fabulous. And what was so sad was that the, that the kitchen set had the door that led into the salon that you saw closed for the next eight <laughs> season, nine seasons. It's like, they're in yeah, there and they're they can't in there. get they're, out. They're, they're, yeah, they're at work. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's great because um, because I didn't get to do that, I was fortunate enough to do In the Line of Fire. Yes, yes. which so, yes, right. was yes. the next one. Yeah, yes. which, which came um, because I wasn't under contract. I was allowed to go and audition for that, so it was great. Which I mean, was things a, work for good reasons and things. Great Absolutely. film, I loved it, I saw it in the theater. And a memorable scene. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. that, that I still get st I mean that, sh that when I think about it I mean I, I look damn good um, because that was over 20 something years ago yes. and I still get stopped for that it was such a um, an iconic role at this mm -hmm. point um, and um, I there's occasions in the grocery store where I'll get like this and if you hadn't let him in you would still be alive and <laughs> what the hell was the dog tied up and for and you were so sweet <laughs> too Let, letting him in he yeah. was crazy I was, like, was kind of like oh <laughs> dead and um, Mary Van Arsdale who played my roommate in this was her really first film oh, okay. and she spent the entire morning being slammed up against that thing <laughs> beat the hell so I like this but it was, um, it was, a, great, it was yeah. a, great, a great movie what was it like working with John Malkovich you know he Good. is amazing because he I had I was doing a stage show at the time and one of the young girls like grabbed me here like if I don't get to meet John Malkovich I'll kill you <laughs> so I had to like ask please could I bring somebody to the set which they allowed me to do and she is a theater major and of course John is big in theater he spent like two hours where they're setting this up talking to her about theater wow. before it was because she was a major at UCLA okay. and um, he was just darling but it's like when they called him time to go like John we're ready for you he just kind of went oh wow and wow. you just saw yeah. that character come alive in his being and it was like like this. Wow. But he was he was wonderful and so and Clint Eastwood li loved our scene in the bank. Okay. And, yeah. and hired me to do Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil from that. Oh from that. See yes, get you never people, well think about Hollywood people, if you guys don't know this, people like to work with people they like to work with. They like to work with people they know can deliver, but also who are nice to be around. It, it was very it was very yeah. flattering. And so I got to work with you know, John Cusack, which is not there. Yeah. And, and I forgot that I worked with Kevin Spacey. Somebody said, where was Kevin Spacey? I said, no, it wasn't. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. <laughs> and he said, you did the night. And I said, oh, my God, I worked with Kevin Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay. Six degrees it's, of Patrika Darby. Right? I was like, oh, like this. And I have not worked with him, though I'm one degree away. Okay. But from the, Kevin, I haven't worked with you. <laughs> Okay. So anyway. Is there anyone that you haven't worked with aside from Kevin Bacon that you would like to work with? You know, I don't pick. I, I will work with anybody. <laughs> yeah, I'll just go with anybody. Um, you know, I mean, I, at this point, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I've worked with with Clint Eastwood. He's an icon. I've worked with. Um, I'm, I'm totally blanking on who I was just going to tell you. Sydney Poitier. Oh my God, one of my idols. Yes. Uh, Sydney, listen, Sydney Poitier. He's sitting where you are. The casting director's out there. She says, Patricia, are you ready? And I went, yes, I'm ready. And then I went, ah! No, I'm sitting this close to Sydney Poitier. And when my mother finds out, she is just going to shit. Pardon me for saying that. And then I went, I went, oh, my God. And then I went, yes, I'm ready. <laughs> but I'm about a major breakdown yeah. at that point. Yeah. But, yes, it's like, Sydney Poitier. I know. I, I can't even It's imagine. like this, you know. And I think that's what's so wonderful that's that, – the things that's changed with the business because now you don't get that opportunity. Yeah. Now everything is put on camera. You oh, don't get yeah. to interact and see, the, you know, and, and yeah. probably that breakdown that I had was what got me the, <laughs> the part in the first place. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of who directed Charlie Wilson's War and I, oh. who just passed. Um, oh, um, <gasps> oh my God. See, I just went right out of I'm my looking head. At his name. He just, he did just yes, pass. I'm looking yes, at his name right he, now too. Did I, I apologize for yes. not being you can look it, you look it up. But, um, you know, I auditioned for him and my agent, or my manager at the time, Bobby, Bobby had been going, you went in with him, you gotta be this, you gotta be this, you gotta be, by the time I got there, I had no nap. I, I was like one big nervous wreck and I started and I went, I have to stop right now. My manager has just driven me crazy and I'm trying to do something that's not right and I am so sorry, but I need to start this over if that's okay with you. And he said, 
as he stopped laughing at me at this point, and then I got to do that movie. Oh, that's so yes. funny. Again, Mike, I, Nichols. Mike Nichols. Mike Nichols, Nichols oh, that's right. Love oh, Mike Nichols. Oh, so, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. To you know, all his films. To be in, uh, oh, Mike Nichols' film, Hello. Oh. Hello. Uh, you know, it was great. And I was doing Alan's, uh, Aaron Sorkin's line, so it was like... I know. It's you like, know, I can't mess this up. I've got to start again and uh, and put her out of here because yes. <laughs> it was like crazy. So anything to actors, ignore everybody. Forget it when you walk through the room. Just do your thing. Well, be there. Yeah, be present. Be present. Um, I just want to say, uh, Sue Marino on here says... Hi, Patrika. You're my favorite actresses. I saw you on an episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> you were. You were on a couple of I, I did two of them. I yeah, was you did say, Which one? The one that I tried to get my hair snatched <laughs> yes. off, or the one that Newman chases me at the, at the mailbox? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was wonderful, too. It yes. was great because I got to do the second one because Jerry asked me to do it because he'd seen in the line of fire and said, Get her back. So okay. that was very nice. Wonderful. And I was working with. Um, uh, Evening Shades, so I was working with Burt uh, Reynolds, Shades, yes. and Burt Reynolds' show didn't shoot on Monday, oh, okay. so I had that off, and so I got to do that on oh, Monday, and then the other. So it's I'm, you know, when I think about it, I truly have been blessed with a lot. Of uh, yeah. Things, so yeah, it's been great. Your resume is this <laughs> long cool and growing, yes. and I'm only 22, <laughs> and you're only 22. <laughs> Have you had? This is a two-parter. Have you had an absolute hands-down favorite role? And what was the role that you booked that you thought, oh my God, I can't believe I booked this? Oh gosh, well, the first part would be um, I got to do a play by Del Shores called Daddy's Dying, Who's Got the, the Will. Yes. And um, that play, we were invited to go to Edinburgh, Scotland, and we performed there in the Fringe. Then I came back and I got to reprise my role in the film. Yeah, the so film that's was. one of my most favorite things because that was um, a character I created on stage. Um, I got to perform it more than, I mean, again, at a little 99 cent waiver theater, and then got to reprise my role on camera. So, and, and working with Bo Bridges and, and, Del, and Beverly D'Angelo, and Dell, who is just a great yeah. writer. So, yeah. um, that was wonderful, um, and I loved creating that character, and I've done several others for Dell, but that was probably my favorite though Marlene and Cheaton was pretty damn good too but, oh, um, that was one of my favorite roles and a role that I didn't think I was going to get I did a pilot years ago and I went in and um, it was like one of those things where you just like <laughs> you walk out of there going thank you very much thank you very much you get in the car and go ah! <laughs> stopped at 7-Eleven got some got a pint of ice cream and a spoon and I'm sitting there <laughs> and I finished that all up and then cried because I'd eaten a pint of hog and dust and the phone rang and my agent said you got the job and I was like you couldn't have called before I finished eating that pint of ice cream so yeah so that was like when you, the things that we do to ourselves yeah. at this point so yeah so that's great but. what do you do to get into character for an audition <laughs> No, um, uh, well, James it, told me you were fun and he wasn't lying. I told you, uh, I'm like, it's like it, it, you know, you kind of look at uh, like most of us actors, we don't always get a script, we just get asides, so we don't know oh, what wow. happened before or what happened after. So, as an actor, I create if I don't know, I create what happened before and what's going to happen after to try to make it real and work for me. And I think that's what a lot of actors do and things like that. Um, it's funny because I was watching an episode of uh, um, Riptide. Oh, and right, I yeah. did the pilot of Riptide. Oh. Two more good just looking guys. Yeah, they are. And um, <laughs> the, but the line was, is that the helicopter? And um, I'm not getting on that thing. Well, I had no idea what the hell that was. Is. So, I mean, I just was, I envisioned some, you know, when, you know, like what, Whirly Bird or something yeah. like it. Anyway, it turned out to be this huge pink helicopter with a face painted on it or something. And, you know, and because I was like, I created my own thing, I got the part. So it was, you know, it's good things, little things like that. You know? Well, we're going to show one last picture because this is your life. Roseanne! <laughs> you played Roseanne uh, in a movie. It's good to be the queen. Yes. <laughs> good to be the queen. I love it. I mean, and I, I, I forgot if I asked you this last time. You, have you ever met Roseanne? Yes, I have. In fact, I met at Roseanne in an elevator after I had done this, and she said, Yeah, Dad, I got a job, but you cried too much. And I said, Thanks. Wow. Uh, you said so, just like her. You said just like her. Crazy. Just like her. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but again, it was good to be the queen. I, I was so fortunate. And, you know, um, uh, Stephen Lee, who who played um, Tom Arnold, yep. has passed away. He's no longer with us. He, he was he was brilliant. Yeah, no, no, I, so, I love it. I love um, it. And uh, it was just a it was a wonderful experience. And again, I could say it one more time. It's good to be the queen. Now, playing a person, a real life person, what differences are there for you to 
Well, you don't want to. I think you don't want to become a caricature of them. You want to be. Remember that the writers have given you, and the writers are producers on Supernatural, which I oh. haven't done. It's been on twelve years. Hello, guys. Anyway, <laughs> just in case you're watching, it hasn't been uh, on twelve years. It's been on forever. Um, yeah. They um, they wrote it, okay. and um, and I want to tell you their names right now, but now <laughs> since I've said do this, I can't. But anyway, um, uh, the. Uh, I, I lost my train of thought. They're selling myself on the side of the street. Which is so awful. <laughs> You're talking about the, wrote the writers. For uh, oh, the, I mean, you just you want to honor yeah. their words yeah. and make the person real um, instead of be a caricature of it. And I, you know, at this point, the, the script lady, I had said to her, if if Patrika drifts in, please let me know so I can try to drift oh, okay. her out. Okay. Um, because in that moment, sometimes you revert to what you do, and so oh. and and um and I think also too, if if I set the character's voice beginning it if I waver away from it at least you're still hearing her um, mm. because you you you're into what you're doing right. so I think that's a, a lot of times what happens there wow, you were actually on an episode of Rose <laughs> yes, 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 yes yes you were that too yes. and that's a lovely thing that keeps on giving too uh, I got <laughs> to play all. I got to play Dan's dream lover which yes. was so much fun <laughs> and yes and uh, uh, it, it was amazing uh and it's good to work with her and then yeah. to be her. I mean, so I had sort of, and yeah. she and she was in charge. She so knew she what she wanted, and she had one of my favorite shows of, of, of all time. I love that show. When she exactly. finally, when she really found her footing, the first she was not a great actress or anything like no. that. But when she finally found her footing, the show had moments of brilliance on it. She was terrific. I mean, I have to say, one of my favorite shows was the one where Darlene writes the poem. Oh, that's, that's a good one. Um, and if you haven't seen that one, okay. it, try to find that because yeah, that's that's a good one. That's really one. It just your heart just. Well, also the one where her father dies, or she finally gets home, or whatever it's called, and he dies, and she says her last little bit while he's in the in the casket. She pulls out, out of her chest. She pulls out a a note, reads it to forgive him and forgive herself, and then throws it in there and says, "I love you, Dad," and walks out. I saw like a baby trying to see it. It's, it. it's well, that's I mean, there's certain things yeah. that we all see. The shows that just suddenly. But that was her. She was like, yeah. I want to capture that, real that middle moment. class life. Jackie's uh, abusive oh boyfriend. Oh my God. Oh yeah, that whole episode. Well, Where I, Dan beats it, him up and, and everything. Oh yes. my God. You, you talked about Roseanne not being the actress. I mean, she's a terrific comedian, as we know. And But she she was surrounded by wonderful, oh, talented sorry, like, people. So, um, it, and they brought those things out. I mean, sometimes things can go this way, but this was like... Oh, she got better. Oh, she got better. I mean, just wonderful. Like that, yeah, so. I agree. But she was in charge, you said. She was definitely... Yes. Ooh, I love that. Yes. But why not? I mean, so they get they say with men. The show says Rose. Hello, it right? Doesn't say Joe Blow. It says right. Rose. But do you think she's got a bad rap because she's a woman, kind of? Because I know with men that run the whip, they don't say anything about them. I, well, I mean, think it's true. I mean, think it's true, and we can be bitches. But um, you know what? Um, at this point, um, there's a difference between being right and yeah. being a bitch. Yes. You know, and I think sometimes what you're saying that that she's right and then she's labeled as a bitch, whereas yes. a man would be, he's very intuitive about this whole right, thing. Right, exactly. But that's the world we live in. It's a man's uh. world. He's <laughs> <laughs> anyway. like, so please. please don't apologize. Loves yeah. I was going to say, he looks, sometimes I look over and he looks like he's in shock. I know. I'm, like, I'm a little scared, like I've done something. I'm bad. not scared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What was the point in your career that you thought to yourself, I might have made it? Oh. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I think I'm waiting for that right now. Sometimes I think, I think uh, I've got so much to do and so many more things to do. I, I don't ever want to be complacent and think I've done it. I, 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 every, every new thing is an adventure and I want to do more and I want to get out there. I want to produce now. I want to, I want oh, yeah. to do everything. Um, so I don't think I've reached that yet. I, at least I don't hope I haven't. I want to keep going up yeah. and doing more and being involved in everything. So. Is there anything that you haven't done that you want to do? Uh, I Broadway. I'd love to do something oh, on Broadway. Yeah. I, mean, I have not done Broadway. Broadway. I think that would be a fun thing. Either yeah. a straight player, and I could, I could sing. <laughs> <laughs> we look off camera for a second, can you? Uh, yes. well, I could ask any of the chickies in my pen. They'll tell you I'm the biggest mother in. <laughs> so I could do that well. I could do that well. I sing that as I clean my apartment. Then <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? I like that, though. I do. I like that. <laughs> I wanted to ask a question. Okay. About <laughs> okay. have you ever had an experience? You've worked with a lot of uh, child actors. Have you ever had any experiences where you thought? 
Wow, they're fresh. <laughs> you know, I really haven't done that. I think a couple times um, on Days of Our Lives, I, I said something to one of the actors there that, you know, that came in late, wasn't in hair and makeup when he was supposed to be, and um, did I say he, she, yeah. Oh, well, well, yeah, sure. And I, you know, I said to him, you know what, they're not going to yell at you. They're going to yell at the hair and the makeup people, and that's wrong. Oh. Get your ass upstairs <laughs> and be on right. time right. and be professional. So that's the only time it was someone on it was someone on days and um, you know and I overstepped my boundaries because it wasn't my place to do it but we happened to have the same makeup and hair person okay. and I didn't like to see them get a, yelled at yeah. because somebody was not ready and I just mother hand <laughs> yeah. went and said something so but isn't the crew people don't understand the crew at all these shows especially soap shows work incredibly hard they're there before you get there they're there after you leave. The if they're your my, hair person, they have to yeah. get there to plug in those rollers or plug yeah. in that wand and get them hot and ready to go. If they're the other, they make sure their brushes are clean and everything's ready to go. So they have to be there before you. So be respectful. And because they're not going to yell at them, are you, they're right. going to yell at them for the person not being ready. So yeah. and there's, that's just inexcusable. Wow. The resume that long, and, and it happened on Days of Our Lives. And you are heading back to <laughs> Salem. Yes, it is, folks. <laughs> He's heading back. That's all oh, we can say. Just come back. Yeah, I'm heading back. It'll be a while. Tune in, but so, keep watching. So you seem to like you. You keep coming back, or if you know, you know. You know what? I, I show up on time. I in hair and makeup <laughs> when I'm supposed to be. I know my words when I'm supposed to be. Um, and um, it's a family that I enjoy being part of, and I'm very grateful that the producers um, and Ken and I got to do yep. um, in the the ladies of the lake. Yep, yep. Which I'm I'm in talks with Michael oh, Caruso sorry. to have him on. Oh, on, on, oh love on. Michael and, I do too. and Barbie. They're just yeah. wonderful. Well, I love Winter Thorn. So and yeah. um, well, but uh, this is terrific. And Kyle Louder. And, yes, I know um, him. My He's first great. Brady. He, he yes. they put it together, and yeah, I'm very excited. it's a lot of fun. So you got to see that too. So I'm you know. Yeah, I'm working on having them on the show because they're they're great people. Michael's so nice. He's the super best. Nice. He's so and he you know he he's another one of those people that. He sees the entire picture. It's not just your hair's out of place or the, the flowers in the wrong place. He sees the, the whole thing and makes sure that it's all perfect and the way he wants it. He's terrific and he's right. He has a great eye. Yes, that's. That is. He has a great eye. He summed everything up. I went like this. I don't know. You're very more theatrical. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm an interviewer. It's so like cut it down. Great eye. I'm a Great eye. Great eye. That's it. Yes. Anyway, so, okay. so, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, how did you find out that you were coming back to Days of Our Lives? Was it a phone call? Or? They called my agent. My agent called me. They want to book you. And so I said, okay. And I'll be there. Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> Not complicated at all. Well, Let me think. No, okay. Yeah. It's okay. Burbank. Oh, yeah. Burbank. Okay. Burbank. <laughs> kind Beautiful of downtown Burbank. Burbank. <laughs> yes. So you must have great people helping you organize all this stuff. I'm going to organize. So I'm like... These different jobs you get, you have to make sure your schedule is really on point. So you can do this job and that's it. No? Uh, well, uh, let's just put it this way. I have this fabulous publicist yes. at this point, Anthony Turk, who <laughs> yes. emails me, who texts me and says where I have to be and what I have to do now because I've gotten very busy because of the nomination. Thank you. Thank and, you. Um, and, and one thing he said back to me is email that makes that you got this so that I know. So um, I'm like printing them out my husband's marking the calendar and okay. so we're all staying the team. organized and stuff and then every once in a while there's a frantic call like this one's canceled but they want you here for this one so it gets a little <laughs> chaotic at times but it's it's good to be busy yes. and it's it's a it's a it's a good bad thing so yes and when can we see you air on days of our lives um probably in november i believe it'll start and stuff like that. people are getting excited they're saying will she bring joy with her we've never met joy since a baby she can't answer that. And she also want to know how long you're going to stay. We can't answer that either. Tune in. Tune in. They're excited. You just got to tune in. Write letters. <laughs> right, exactly. Tweet people. Yes. It does work. <laughs> Dear them. Ken and Marnie. <laughs> <laughs> but tweet them. Anything. Do it. So, well, you know, it is, it's, it, it's the head writers, too, have to come. Yeah. Their stories are so far ahead, and they really, I mean, and they work, they work a long time trying to get... Because they have to get every character woven into somewhere or another, and yeah. um, so it's uh, I give them kudos. I will come back if asked. Okay. I love it. There. I love that. Do you have a Do you have a dress for the Emmys? No, I'm going tomorrow to Apollo Two, who has done all my gowns before. Okay. You don't have to ask me that question, Hills, of course. And he's going to 
design something for me. Okay, we're good. You should have Paul and Patrick on sometime. They're pretty sure. crazy. Sure, we'll, we'll do that one. What color are you thinking? Well, um, <laughs> my publicist thinks it should be sort of like an emerald green or a Ooh. royal purple or something like that. Sounds Ooh. beautiful. Ooh. Sounds beautiful. I'll be work with you. It does work with you. Thank you. I think so. I agree. You had mentioned your husband. <laughs> I heard you and your husband have a fantastic little love story. <laughs> My husband and I met um, in the little theater, Burbank Little Theater, um, and uh, I was in the chorus, and he was the stage manager, and um, we started dating and building sets and doing everything together. Then we went over to the Golden Mall Playhouse, which was another little theater, and we got married on stage on a set for Barefoot in the Park, which is a young couple <laughs> oh, that my yes. husband had designed. We got married by um, Judge Andrew Weiss. Uh, he came there, and we got married in front of the curtain all scalp so fines and stuff and then we raised it and had the reception in the apartment so yeah so and we've been married 43 years so oh, right jeez years yeah. jeez wow. congratulations yeah. when's your anniversary December 29th he married oh. me because of tax purposes damn <laughs> 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 <Very tolerant>. <laughs> <laughs> good man okay <laughs> sure you got it so one last question before we have to go. You, you one last go. question before we go. Yes. I'm trying to see if it's a scripted question or. <laughs> I'm looking for math. You tell you what's your last question. My last question would be: In addition to uh, Acting Dead and your reprisal on Days of Our Lives, what else do we have to look forward to? The for... Ladies of the Lake, um, yes. which is going to be coming out, and then I'm auditioning, so hopefully something will come out of there. Like I said, I've never been on Supernatural, Criminal Minds, NCIS. Uh, Which is shocking. Everybody's on those shows. Come on. I know. But you know what? Um, they don't have a lot of dingy women. <laughs> no, I could be a judge. You could be a judge. Or a doctor. Could. Yes, you could. A dead person that comes back. A witch. Now, don't look at me. Couldn't I be a vicious villain? You'd never, you'd never suspect me. That's true. No. You could totally be biting and, and bitchy. Oh, I'd like to see it. I could be a CIA spy. Good. You could play anything. I am. Except an instrument. Damn, I'm not musically. <laughs> no, I'm mean with the spoons, baby. Get me some spoons and I can play the spoons. Next time I'm bring some spoons the in. Next time I bring some spoons Do you on. like playing good or bad better? You know what? It was good to be the bitch, um, but I, as an actor, I like to do anything and everything. It's like, just give me a role and let me go after it and stuff like that. But I can be vicious. Ask my husband at 43. <laughs> <laughs> the answer when it comes to acting, the answer is never no. <laughs> never, you, you know, only if it's morally offensive. It's something that morally rubs you the wrong way or, or you just feel, this is gratuitous crap, then yeah. don't do it. But if it's something that's like two words, uh, the biggest check I ever got was from the A-team, the A team, oh my, my God. My words were from where? <laughs> that was it. They forgot to put me in the credits. They forgot to do that. So I think those two words cost them $5,000 each. Oh, dang. You know, but, and then the reruns, which ought to be starting now because there's so much other TV. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but, but right. you know, um, so yes, I have been around. Um, but yeah, so there are small things, worlds, but you make them your own, do things, you know, that's the best thing. You've made a career of it. I have, honey, and I'm going to keep on going. That's right. Good. Thank you. Thanks Good. for being on. Thank, Thank you. you for coming yeah. on. Thanks, Matthew, for inviting what me to. What a too. pleasure. Yes. So Thank glad. You. Isn't, isn't she Thank like this? Isn't she this? The, yes. The yes. Will you stay for every show? Yeah. <laughs> We're not leaving. There Screw were a you guys. couple of times I thought, like I said, you looked like you were in the headlights. I was just enjoying every moment. <laughs> like I thought I'd scared the hell out of you. <laughs> well, Parchika Darbo is on Twitter at Parchika Darbo. You can find her there. Uh, Matthew, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Matthew E. Payne. Thank you, everyone, for, who's in the chat room for watching and, and, and talking. And Hi, she's, she appreciates you. it. She appreciates it very much. Spotlight Ons are on AfterBuzzTV.com. We have them on iTunes there, too. Just look for her name. There's two of them, actually. I mean, this one and the other one that we did last I year. I reading something. No, it's all, no, all, all memory. Good. He's a very oh, smart man. Good. Yes. <laughs> and I'm James Lott Jr. You can follow me on all social media platforms at James Lott Jr. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 